It's springtime now, the days are getting longer, the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the flowers are blooming. To celebrate the season, I decided to make this pinwheel quilt in springtime colors. It's a fun scrappy quilt that really celebrates the season. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shalina. Today, we're diving into a project that's bursting with color, a green and purple pinwheel quilt. This quilt has been such a joy to make and I can't wait to show you the whole process from fabric selection to the finished quilt top. But before we get there, let's talk about the color scheme. Choosing fabrics for a scrap quilt can be tricky, but I have some tips to show you how to create a beautiful and balanced palette. So grab your favorite quilting supplies and settle in and learn how to make a stunning pinwheel quilt that will add a pop of personality into your home. Let's get started. I've chosen to make this quilt called Warm Breeze from the All People Quilt website. I started out with this fat quarter bundle. I like this purple uh, fabric, and I think a purple quilt would be nice to have. This one has some pinks in it and some other colors as well, which I think will make a lovely quilt. But I wanted to have a little bit more purple since uh, I was in a purple mood, so I found another couple of purple fabrics that I can add to this set that I think will look good together. And I'm not sure if this is the selection that I'm going to be using. This is enough fat quarters, but I do have this other collection that I might add just to add a little bit more of the green in here. I really like this fabric, but I don't think I want both of these. So this is pretty much the same set, except that they have different colors. Yeah, you can see that they're very, all the patterns are the same in here. So I'll have to choose which colors I'd rather have. And this also comes in, there's also some blues, which I don't think I want now. Although they, I could use some of these. This is sort of the same collection. So I had to decide if I want to add some blue. This one might make an interesting collection, but yeah, I don't think I'll use any of these. So here's the first set of bundle that I'm thinking about using, and here's some extra fabrics that I might add. I might take away some of the other fabrics and decide which ones I want to use just to add more of the green and less of the pink. So I really do like this one. Maybe I'll switch this one up. Let's see if this looks better. I could use this in addition to those. I like that this is a little darker though. I only really like these colors, but I like this darkness too. We'll have to see. So this is the the selection of fabric that I'm starting out with. I'll have to decide which ones I want to use. I think I need seven. So I have a few too many. And I just had to decide which ones I want to use. Of course, I could use more because this is a scrappy type of a quilt. And then this will be the background fabric. So whatever I do, it's going to have to work well with this, with this and not blend too much into it. So I don't think this, this one might be too much, too blendy. It's not going to have enough con it doesn't have enough contrast I think all the rest of these look like they have enough contrast to be able to go with this background so 
So let me tell you a little bit about how I do the color selections when I do. Um, I think about an idea of what kind of mood that I'm looking for, and I want like a springtime pastel -y vibe, something that just r reminds you of spring and playing around in the garden. And so I think all of these fabrics will look good with that. And like I said before, I was also thinking about purple, so that kind of helps with that also. And then pulling out a fat quarter bundle helps because then you have somebody else's ideas about what matches and what doesn't match. And then you can add your own special touch. Um, because we've all been wearing clothes and looking at other people wearing clothes, we do have an idea about what matches and what doesn't match. But sometimes it's hard to have the confidence to be able to wear what you want to wear. And I think it's a matter of just choosing and 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 giving yourself that freedom to choose your own colors and to trust that you really like it. So what I do normally is once I choose the colors that I want, I do two things. One, I can add and subtract that same fabric and see how it looks, whether it's adding to the quilt or taking away from it or if it's not making a difference at all. So I can add, remove it, add, remove it, and see how it looks. I, I do that with each of my fabrics. Even if I don't have more than one I need, I try to do that anyway. And then another thing that I do is once I have chosen what I want to keep or have a pretty good idea, is I let the fabric sit overnight. I, let, I go through it at least a 24-hour period so that I can look at it throughout the day as I'm walking around the house doing the normal stuff because Fabric will look different under different lighting conditions and my mood changes a little bit from time to time and so I just look at it again and again over throughout the day so that I can make sure that everything fits the way I think it's going to fit and if I if I don't like it, if it looks different under different lighting conditions, then maybe I'll switch some more fabric around. But I do want, this is a step, because it is such an important step, is I do want to give it time to think about it and actually be really happy with the fabric selection. It's only when I'm fully satisfied that this is the good set of fabric that I want to use, that's when I start cutting and using the fabric. Until then, I just keep trying out different things and testing it out, putting things maybe in a different order to see, you know, I see if there's any particular fabrics that I like it with or don't like it with and that way I can get an idea about a better idea about what I like and I'll be using this for the inner border the quilt itself has an inner and an outer border that's really dark and I might use this one um, I think it looks pretty good with the selection so maybe I I think that the purple, would, the a darker purple, is still light enough to go well with the rest of the fabrics and not be too jarring against the other fabric. So I probably will use this one as well for the border. I post quilting videos on this channel. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of them. All right, it's another day. I've looked over my fabrics throughout the day and I really like the way they look. I'm still happy with them. I found this teal scrap from another project to add to this quilt because I like to add some continuity between my quilts.
I've gone ahead and sewed these strips together and I've pressed them and now what I'm going to do is to add a corner to each piece so I can make the pinwheels nice and sharp. So I'm just going to sew corner to corner, trim off this part, and then I'll have a nice pinwheel shape. Okay, I want to show you where I am on this project. Here's some squares that circle around the pinwheels. And these are strip piece, so there's several different kinds that I have. Okay, so you can see that I strip piece these different kinds. You can see this is a different one than this one. The directions for the ones that are in the border area are different in that it's asking for us to use squares instead of strip piecing. Maybe it's to make more variety in the blocks, but I decided that I think we'll have enough variety even if I strip piece. So I'm going to go ahead and strip piece two of these um, to make more of this kind of uh, shape for the for the borders. And I can just mix and match them for the pinwheels and also for the border, and that'll make give it more variety as throughout the quilt. These are the other colors I've chosen for the other strips. I've also made the pinwheels now, so I've strip piece some of these and put in a little corner to make it a pinwheel. And so there's four different kinds of those. And I'll make pinwheels out of those. And they just go, you put them with one of the, each of these are put in with one of, one of these pieces. And then they're alternated uh, with the same color to go all the way around the, the piece, like this. And then the, these little pieces go around the corners this way, here and here. All of these pieces will be the same colors so that it looks like one whole pinwheel. And then these will have a variety of colors to give that little sparkle on the quilt. And I've also, see what else is in here. Um, as I cut these with the flip and sew method, I had some extra fabric. I went ahead and sewed these up so that they're half square triangles. I actually like to go ahead and sew my extra piece. Actually, go ahead and sew my extra piece before I cut. So that way I don't have little loose pieces everywhere. I actually have a half square triangle that I can put in my orphan box to use later. And then the other thing for the outer border are these little leftover squares and I'm just piecing them together as I go along. I'm making these as leaders and enders right now and just piecing them together so that they can go around the border. Um, so that's the progress so far. So I'm going to go ahead and press all of these and um, make my other strips make make these other strip sets to cut them so that I have them available um, so that I can alternate colors so that there's more variety in each of the blocks. I've gone ahead and pressed all of these uh, blocks. So these are the pinwheels are all ready to go. And these blocks are ready to go along with them. Going to do is I went ahead and made these strip sets. So I'm going to cut these up and make these kind of blocks so I can 
sprinkle them around throughout the pinwheel blocks as well as the inner border and the inner border goes just like this with these empty spaces so they'll just alternate around there and once I finish these I can make sure that I'm dispersing them throughout the quilt between the outer inner border and also between the pinwheel blocks and these I have left over are the half square triangles that are extra and I think they'll look really good as also a pinwheel as a different kind of pinwheel I guess for for a different project so I'll just go ahead and put these in my orphan block box so that they'll be available when I'm ready for that project. My microphone isn't working on this clip, so it looks like this voice is dubbed, but I just wanted to show you that I placed the pieces on the design wall so I could keep track of where they all went. So here's what my block looks like right now. I have all, I have the pinwheel shape attached to the little squares that go with that. So now I've made the pinwheel block. I've also pieced together the inner border strips. And what I've decided to do is instead of sewing it as an inner border, I'm just going to enlarge the block and make this a four block quilt. Then I'll just be able to sew the four patch together before I sew on the outer border. And here's how the quilt looks with all of the blocks. I'm alternating the purples on and the greens so that there's nice balance in the quilt. Unfortunately, I didn't really think through how the quilt would look at the end. Um, so I have the, on the right side, it looks like there's darker colors and on the left side, there's lighter colors. Um, but I think it'll still look good throughout the quilt. And there's no way for me to change the blocks around so that they alternate better. There's really no way because there's a dark purple and a light purple and a dark green and a light green. And if you're alternating colors, you really can't alternate the, the values of the, the blocks. And if you alternate the values, then you wind up with the same colors on both rows or columns and I'd rather have the color spaced out so I'm going to leave it the way this is. I'm going to attach the inner border strips to the block to make the blocks bigger and then I'll wind up with a four patch that I can sew together. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do the outer border as strips like this to make the blocks bigger or whether I'm going to add it as a border so we'll see how that goes. Normally, I just fix my quilting mistakes and move on, but I'm leaving them here in this video so that you get a better idea about what normal looks like. I've noticed that I've sewn some of these incorrectly. This block needs to go the other direction so that this doesn't line up exactly right underneath this. I need to stagger it a little bit to have that free floating look on them. 
So it's just a matter of unsoldering just a little piece and fixing that on a few of these blocks. I noticed on this quilt that I sewed the this little strip incorrectly. I so I didn't put the right sides together. So what I've done, just in case you this happens to you, I ripped out this seam. This was in like this. I ripped out this seam and I also ripped out these little pieces so I could get this out. I went a little bit over on both sides so that I could put this in correctly. I'll just put it in correctly this way. Once this is in and then place back again, it'll be the way it's supposed to be. And then I can go back and just sew this seam again. The rest of the seam, I'll just start a little bit farther in and sew down. And likewise here, I'll just start over here somewhere and then just sew down to finish off the seam again to fix this. I probably could have just left it in the way it was, but um, I would remember and I would notice and so I wanted to fix it while I can. Uh, when I'm making a traditional quilt like this, I usually fix all the mistakes that I notice because I know that there may be a mistake that I don't notice that winds up in the quilt, but while I if I do notice it and it's an easy enough fix, then I can just go ahead and fix it. That's why I like to do regular quality inspection checks so that I can fix the mistakes as I go along and don't, don't wind up with glaring mistakes at the end of the quilt project. Okay, here you see I have the four blocks done. I have the inner border attached to the four blocks in a way that there's still just four blocks. I'm working on the outer border layout. I have the individual squares sewn next to each other and I have the little corners attached. And so now I'm gonna work on getting the dark inner border. When I looked at the original design that the designer had made, her outer border and her original pattern looks a little bit different in that there's some spacing between all the, the row of little blocks her rows doesn't go all the way through she leaves some spacing in between them and i really like that look so i'm going to copy that here so i'll have a dark purple in between the borders and then i'll have the row of little squares and then i'll have another dark purple border on the outside i'm going to leave some space in the small blocks to me it looks more like a garden more like a free open area and that's what i would prefer I pressed everything so now it's just a matter of piecing the darker purple strips to the all the little um, squares that have been sewn together and then I can put them together. I decided I'm going to go ahead and do them as uh, four blocks instead of a whole outer border. So I'll just enlarge the blocks the way I did with the inner border. I'll just enlarge them the same way just to make a four patch. That way I won't have any long borders to have that I need to add. I've gone ahead and started building up the outer borders. As you can see, I'm just going to add them in to just enlarge the four blocks that we have. Here's the bottom. I like the way the dark color helps accent the blocks. Now I'll go ahead and keep sewing. Okay, and finish with sewing the outer border. That last corner is still in the sewing machine. I had to adapt this block a little bit because I'm not making this as a separate, because I didn't sew on the inner border first, this one. I need, I wanted to put it into the corner piece so that it would, it would work right. Because otherwise, if I had done it as a row, the sari would be there. So now I can just sew these four pieces, the two outer border pieces and the outer border and the block itself as a four patch. And once I'm done putting these together as a four patch, I can put the whole quilt together as a four patch. Okay, all of the, all of the borders are now pieced and attached to the, the corners are attached to the borders. And so now I'm going to attach the borders to the blocks.
I'm going to press this down and then take it back to the design wall. Here you can see that I have sewn together all of the outer borders to the blocks, all four blocks. And now I can go ahead and sew the top borders and the bottom borders. I like to place my pins at a diagonal like this so that both sides of the seam, this side here and this side are both under the pin. That keeps them both going in the right direction. Anytime there's a long piece of fabric that we need to sew together, I like to have the I like to pin to make sure that I have all the all of the seams in the right direction and everything matches. It helps match the seams. Also make sure that you're not having too much fabric on one side versus the other. So here I'm going to make sure that I'm reaching the ends. And then I'm going to push up, pull on both the fabrics find the middle and pin that. And then I can also add another piece, other pins, if I want. This way you can make sure that all the fabric is the right size, everything's going to work together before you start sewing, then you don't have to unsew anything. There's no guarantee of that. It just makes it easier. If you need to make sure these are straight, you can pull on this or this, whichever side that you want to have farther in or out, so that the raw edges are butting up against each other. Even though the needle can probably go over these small pins by themselves, I pull them out anyway. I'd rather be safe. Treat my machine with care. And even though this is not the end of the scene, this is going to go wind up in the middle. I still like to just add some extra stitches here just to make sure that the edges are secure. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the blocks the same way. And here you can see that the corner is nice and straight. It's all going in the right direction. It does look like the row of blocks are going around and the, the inner border looks like an inner border, the outer border looks like an outer border. So even though I, I sewed it differently than what the pattern called for, it looks exactly the same way it would if I did follow the pattern. There may be a seam extra here and there, or, or there may be an extra seam here, but it's not going to be very noticeable. Here you can see that I have all four of the blocks pieced together with the inner border and the outer border. So now I'm going to go ahead This block is sewn on wrong so I'm going to fix that. Okay, there we have it. Four blocks. I went ahead and repaired that corner that I had. I had both of the borders on incorrectly and now that's all fixed. The quilt has passed quality inspection. All the inner borders look like they're going correctly around the quilt. And all of the outer borders look like they're going correctly around the quilt. So now it's just a matter of sewing the quilt together as a four patch and then this quilt top will be finished.
joining the two blocks together. the other side the same way. Here you can see that the outer border has been attached to each of the blocks and the top two blocks have been sewn together and the bottom two blocks have been sewn together. So there's just one long seam to finish the whole quilt top. It's all in one piece now. So here you have it, the worst glamour shot in history. This quilt is a little bit too big for the design wall. The design wall is tucked here between my, win my door and my window, but it worked just fine for me while I was making this quilt. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this quilt and got some inspiration from it. Let me know in the comment box below, have you ever made a pinwheel quilt of your own? I've made another quilt that's perfect for springtime. It's an applique rabbit. It really makes a wonderful Easter quilt. That's a bunny rabbit that's embroidered. I upcycled a pair of pants to make that and I'll place a link to that video here and I'll also put it in the pinned comment. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all of your support and I'll see you in the next video.